Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Yoga Break It Down. I'm Yoga Suze. In this episode, we're going to explore Warrior 3. In a previous episode, we explored Warrior 1 and 2. Warrior 3 is a balance pose. We're going to start with an exercise to tune into our balance, which does not include the same alignment as when we fully get into the Warrior 3 pose. And I simply call this exercise picking something up off the floor. And I think it can help in this exercise to actually have something light, like a headscarf, um, a belt, uh, a straw, something light that you can actually drop onto the floor to pick up, as I'm demonstrating here. So you can start standing on two feet, and you may start to bring one foot back, bending in the leg that you're going to be standing on, and you drop your object right in front of you on the floor. In this exercise, we're going to start to focus on something very important in the Warrior Three, and that's utilizing the upper and lower body as one unit, one line, one board, one object that's pivoting on a, a fulcrum uh, at the top of the leg. So this is your body, and it's going to move in unison. So it's not about having the torso in one position and having the leg at an angle to that torso. We're always going to keep it in one line. So you drop the object in front of you, your legs bent, and you're going to start to lean forward towards the object as you're lifting up the leg. So using your inner awareness to think about maybe points in the torso and the leg. Sometimes I actually touch uh, a finger to the upper chest area and maybe to the upper leg to sort of have a sense of where those two parts are and try to bring them in line. I'm lowering the torso, lifting the leg, and I'm going to scoop that object up off the floor with my fingers and then raise the leg and torso in unison as well, bringing that foot down to the floor. So this will happen very quickly. Uh, you don't have to linger in it. If you're struggling reaching to the floor, perhaps in this exercise, you won't actually work on reaching the object at the floor or even dropping the object at the floor. Just think about bringing the torso and leg sort of midpoint as though you were performing some type of task where you had to get down there and then floating up. Because that's really the practice is getting a fluid motion with this regardless of how much time you actually spend in the position. I find that balancing exercises are really similar to practicing meditation. There are so many people who say that they can't meditate because their mind wanders, and there are so many people who say they can't balance because they fall. So in meditating, the mind wandering is the point, that we have an observer in us who can notice that the mind wanders because this animal has a mind that wanders. And so what meditation is, is observing the mind wandering and then occasionally directing it to a place where the mind instead focuses on the breath uh, and it's not wandering so much. But the point isn't to shut the mind up and to live in some perfect peaceful place. It's to observe the crazy humans that we are to observe this animal. So with balancing, the point is not to achieve it perfectly or not. It's to be aware of how much the leg wobbles, to be aware that the foot is weak, the ankle is weak, or the leg is weak, to be aware of how the back feels when you make this alignment to be aware of all of these things, and we make our modest attempt at it coming into it, even if we're just coming into it for a second or two, the purpose is to work towards a moment of grace without sighs and groans and belittling yourself, thinking that you failed. So warrior three is basically the exercise we just did. It's just changing the way we think about it. So the first exercise 
I gave us a task of trying to pick something up off the floor to focus on why we're moving the body and get used to that. The picking something up off the floor exercise helps prep us for Warrior Three, but it also shows us what we can do if we're off balance and end up leaning forward, lunging forward, and touching the floor. How we can work on floating up from that point up to standing or even practicing getting back where we want to in Warrior Three. So in this first try of Warrior Three, we're going to have two feet on the floor. We're going to start to bring one foot back, have the other leg bent, that will be our standing leg, so similar to the previous exercise. Make sure that with that one foot back, you sense there that the body, the torso, and that leg are in one diagonal. And then with the standing leg bent, you start to lower the torso, raise the foot, lower the torso, raise the foot. And so in the full pose of Warrior Three, we're working on the torso and leg being parallel to the floor. You may be there briefly, as in the previous exercise, and then float back up. You may get to that midpoint or your effort at that midpoint briefly, feel like you're not balanced, so then you're going to focus on just floating back up. Do not worry about how long you're in the pose. We build confidence in balancing poses by performing it as fluidly, as gracefully as we can, rather than if we hold it as long as we possibly can because we feel like that's an accomplishment, we can end up falling out of the pose and we'll actually remember the falling out of the pose, not that we held it for a solid minute at a time. So it's better to just get to our, our best extent of the pose for a couple breaths and gracefully float back up and come out of that than to you know, power through trying to hold that pose. Here I'm demonstrating bringing Warrior 3 into a flow. So going from Warrior 2 to Warrior 1 and then to Warrior 3. If you are unfamiliar with practicing Warrior 2 or Warrior 1, see the previous episode I have breaking down those poses. I always thought that the numbers assigned to the warrior poses are in a strange order as it works well to transition from warrior two to warrior one to warrior three, not one, two, three. So from warrior one, you have that front leg in that bent position. The only thing different in how you practiced it previously is the back foot is way back. So you can start to tilt the torso forward and down a little bit and scooch that back foot a little bit back till it's comfortable, till you feel secure, lifting the leg and lowering the torso. But the same work is involved. Finding the degree on how much you're going to lower the body and see if you're going to go to parallel or not. Once you're there, see if you can breathe into it, choose your arm position. See if you like the standing leg bent or straight, that's your preference and then work on the extensions in the two different directions. Again, if your leg is straight, bending the standing leg as you're ready to transition out of it and coming gracefully and quietly to standing. So you're not going to be um, clunking in this position. It's, it's beautiful. You're beautiful. With all yoga poses, it is likely that we discover we are have an easier time on one side than the other, or are stronger on one side than the other, or are more flexible on one side than the other. In balancing, we quickly find out that one side we have more ease with balancing than the other. And you may have to tune into that a little bit. If you feel like you absolutely suck with balancing, you might just think you struggle on both sides. But one side's going to be a little bit more at ease with it than the other. So I recommend, I always recommend, certainly practicing on each side, but then do an extra practice on the side that you struggle on. This last example that I'm going to show is practicing with the support of a table. And ideally you can find a table that is about uh, hip height or just under, so that when you place your hands on top of it, 
you have the body in a nice straight line, preferably parallel to the floor or close. In this example, we can go about it how we had before, where we start tuning into the balance of the standing foot and work on the torso and leg tilting and then resting the hands on the table. This can be a great way to practice if you have tried in the middle of the floor and felt that you keep falling forward and just struggle with tilting forward to a certain point. When you are in warrior three and you have your leg raised, you're wanting the hips and pelvis to be even. And this takes possibly more practice than the balancing practice to be able to draw your awareness into your lower back, hips and pelvis and sense their alignment. And the tendency is to lift the hip of the raised hip as though you're rotating the hip open and about to turn the torso to face out to the side. So that's our tendency. So we want to tune into the hips and sense their alignment. If you are really unsure, I would recommend making a practice of dropping the hip of the raised leg because likely it has lifted. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Yoga Break It Down. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button so you can be reminded when there's a new episode. Remember that every body needs yoga. So that means Anne Rice needs yoga, tow truck drivers need yoga, landscape architects need yoga, and you, you especially baby, you need yoga too. So please tune in next time to Yoga Break It Down. Bye-bye.